The question becomes, from a matchmaker standpoint, well, the opponent, the one who's going to challenge Shakur Stevenson, what type of fan base does he have? What type of representation, if any, does he have? He has good representation. Well, let's get on the phone and see if he would be available. So Brad Goodman, the matchmaker, gets on the phone. And let's say he contacts Samson Lukowitz. Now, here's the great part about all of the dynamics involved in this is that I just told y'all that Shakur Stevenson fought, what, seven, eight months ago? But Edwin De Los Santos just fought about four months ago. You see that? So, of course, his representation want to keep him active. I mean, the last time we saw De Los Santos fight, don't forget, he got knocked down. He did get back up. He finished the fight in dramatic fashion by closing out the show with the TKO. I believe it was in the 11th round. So this is why. You see? This is why. This is going to be a competitive fight. Because the fans have seen what Edwin De Los Santos bring to the table. In other words is, he's not going to lay down for Shakur Stevenson. He's not an Uber driver. He's competitive. He has a winning record. He's undefeated. And he's looking to waste the memory of those who saw him get dropped. Why not try to make history in beating another undefeated fighter in Shakur Stevenson. And let me also include this in the equation because top rank is the A side. And ESPN is the network. We know that Edwin De Los Santos is not African American. And we also know in the business that when you have an African American fighter competing in the ring against a non African American fighter, that's a great possibility to generate the most revenue. We want both fighters to compete at a high level, but also to maximize their earning potential. What better way to do it between these two undefeated fighters? Live and in living color in Las Vegas on ESPN doesn't get any better than that. Now, this is where most people will have to put their listening ears on and get this education right now. Because Edwin De Los Santos is fighting and competing on another promoter's card. And so, business says that a percentage of his purse will have to go to his promoter. That's good business. Now, you might not think that's good business, but it is. Remember, I had a promoter on this show just a few days ago telling you all that promoters lose a lot of money in this business. Promoters invest a lot of monetary resources in this business, and it's very difficult for them to at least, at the bare minimum, recoup their initial investment. And so that's why it's good business for De La Santos promoter to get a small piece of the earnings. Because guess what? The promoter is the one who helped set up this fight to give De La Santos the opportunity to compete in Las Vegas on a globally recognized network, ESPN, against a guy in Shakur Stevenson, who has the pedigree and the undefeated record and the following that he has for him to be able 
to make history and spoil you the plans of Shakur Stevenson. And on the flip side of that coin, because Shakur Stevenson has representation as well, of course, he would have to be able to pay his representation the same exact way. The bottom line is this. This is good business. And that's the only business that I'm interested in. In fact, that's the only business that I'm interested in and educating you on. Good business. And so everybody is collectively coming to the table to put on a great show to entertain you, the boxing fan, to entertain you, the boxing community, to basically entertain all of us who love the sport of boxing. Now, the challenge is this. Shakur Stevenson does not have a lengthy history of generating a lot of revenue outside of New Jersey, his hometown. He does a wonderful job. When I say wonderful, I mean live gate ticket sales are always through the roof. And Shakur Stevenson usually almost, if not guaranteed, definitely sell out in New Jersey, particularly the Prudential Center. So this is an opportunity for Shakur Stevenson to go to another level of showing the fans that he is marketable outside of New Jersey. But he needs the support of the fans to be able to maximize his earning potential. Because here's the great thing about this. If Shakur Stevenson, the ace side in this fight, can do good numbers, respectable numbers, not just through the ESPN, ESPN pay-per-view arm, you know, ESPN Plus, but also in another venue in Vegas, live, the sky's the limit for this young guy. Now, why am I bringing that part up? Because rumors have been circulating for the last two weeks that I know of. Behind the scenes and somewhere probably on YouTube, that Shakur Stevenson is struggling to sell tickets. I don't know if that's true or not. Just a rumor. Don't make no difference to me. The bottom line is this. If Shakur Stevenson can not only do good at the live gate, but also look good in this fight, we can see him again in Vegas. We can see him again look good on ESPN. We already know right now that's one of the two only networks that's producing boxing besides the zone. Talk about major when I say producing boxing. I know there's other smaller stream um, you know, networks. I'm talking about major right now. And so this is good for Shakur Stevenson to tap into a new audience, a new uh, audience that's alive out there in Vegas. So this is really a win-win for both fighters. This is really a win-win for both promoters, Bob Arum and Samson Lukowitz. You know what this would do to Samson, his company, his people, all the other fighters that he represent? If Edwin can go in there and spoil you the milk carton and beat Shakur Stevens? You know how much business will be on the table? This is the fights that we want to see. And what's next for the winner of this fight? We'll talk about that in another. You know what? I'm doing way too much talking. Don't take my word for it. Roll the tape.